What's up, I'm Ijema, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about generators. We're gonna be walking through what they are and learning about how to create them and also just realize like how overpowered they are in comparison to plain old iterator objects. If you don't know much about iterators or you don't know anything about them at all, I posted a video on that topic a couple months ago, so you can pause this video, watch it, come back and continue this video. Understanding generators is gonna be significantly more difficult if you don't understand how iterators work. But if you are comfortable with iterators, let's jump into like a high level explanation of what a generator is. Very powerful. It actually has two sides to it. So the first side is that a generator is an iterator such that it follows the iterator protocol. The iterator protocol basically states that an object is an iterator if it has a key called next, which implements a method that returns back out an object with the value and done keys. So a generator does that, it has a key called next, and when you call that next method, it returns back an object with the keys done and value. But generator kicks it up a notch by also following the iterable protocol. For anything to be iterable in JavaScript, meaning if you pass that iterable into a for of loop, it will be able to step through it like strings and arrays. It needs to assign a method that returns an iterator to a symbol.iterator key. So it kind of streamlines all the features that developers want when it comes to making an iterator object or making something iterable. You can either have that generator act as an iterator object that you can pass around to multiple different objects, or you can just create a generator and then pass that into the loops that you want and it's going to step through like any other iterable. So the most common way you create generators is through the generator function. So with this following code block, I'm going to show you the syntax for a generator function. So here I have my generator function called generator function. So right off the bat, you probably noticed a couple of different things to this function. The first would probably be the star or asterisk right next to the function keyword. This tells us that we're dealing with a generator function. The second is the yield keyword that is right before a value. The yield keyword is responsible for exposing the value that's next to it up and out to the outer for of loop. So the way that I like to think about it is that for every yield statement that's going to be called, that's going to be one step of your for of loop. So here I call generator function and that's returning back out to us a generator object. As I mentioned before, generator objects are just like iterator objects, but they implement a couple of extra methods. For the sake of this video, we're just going to focus on the fact that it implements the next method. Even though generator functions are fairly similar to regular functions, given that it can hold very dynamic logic, it's very different in one specific way. When you call a generator function, it doesn't execute the logic that lives inside of it. Instead, it's just gonna return back out a generator object. So when does it get executed? So the logic inside of a generator function will get executed when the generator's next method gets called. That's gonna trigger the execution inside of generator function to begin. It's going to execute all the logic up until the first yield statement that it hits. Once it hits yield, it's going to return that value and expose it to our for of loop and then pause execution of that generator function. For us to continue executing the logic inside of generator function, we have to wait for our for of loop to call our generator next method again. And this process is gonna continue until we reach the end of our generator function. So what that means is that instead of having to create an object and then expose a symbol.iterator key and then create a function that returns an iterator object and that being your iterable object, you can just create a generator which is now your iterable object. So much more simple. I'm gonna show you another example of using a generator as a regular iterable object. Here I have another generator function called generate sequence that takes in two arguments, start and end. Inside of this method, I have a for of loop that starts from start and ends at end. For each step of the for loop, I yield the current value. So when I call generate sequence, I pass in the numbers one and 10, and that's gonna return back out to me a generator, which is again, just like any other iterable object like a string or an array. So I pass in my generator into a for of loop. The first time we call generator next, we're going to start our internal for loop and then yield our first current value. Then it's gonna pause. Once our outer for of loop calls generator next again, our generate sequence for loop is going to resume again by yielding the next current value and continue until the for loop is complete. And when I print out a number at each step, I see that I'm printing out every number between one and 10 inclusively. Taking advantage of generator function makes it so much easier for developers to create iterable objects. So as I mentioned before, generators don't only serve as iterables, but they can also serve as iterators. So with this next code block, I'm gonna show you how you can use a generator just like any other iterator that can be used to create an iterable. 
So here we have our range object again, and we have our keys from and to just like before. Right below that, we have the original way of creating a standalone bare bones iterator object. We have a regular function that returns an object, which is our iterator. Well, we can take this code and transform it into using generators. So here you can see I'm using an anonymous generator function. And inside of this generator function, I have a for loop. I set my local variable current equal to this dot from. The this keyword is pointing to the current scope and our current scope is our range object. So we have access to the ranges from key inside of our generator function. So this dot from is kind of similar in idea to us doing range dot from. And then for each step of our for loop, we yield current. So what we're doing here is that even though our generator function, when it's getting called, is returning a generator, which is still technically an iterable, it's also considered to be just like any old regular iterator object. When we're passing this generator object into range's symbol.iterator's key, we're able to transform our range object into an iterable object. And one thing that I really want to point out is that using generator functions significantly reduces the amount of code that you have to write when creating iterators. Like if we look back at our original iterator implementation, we're using tons of lines just to keep track of tedious information. A lot of these lines don't even directly attribute to the logic that we want to focus on. Like I had to introduce the two extra keys current and last just so I have references to the start and ending values. But if we take a look at our generator implementation, we see that a lot of that extra tedious detailing of keeping track of values is abstracted away. There's a whole bunch more that makes up generators, but for this video, I wanted to have a more introductory look to the feature. If you want me to cover maybe more advanced topics around generators, let me know down in the comment section below. I was thinking about maybe creating an extra set of like hands-on practical videos where I maybe handle a series of promises with generators or even create a custom data structure. So let me know if you want to see that. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more JavaScript content. I'm also on Twitter where I talk about JavaScript and a variety of different things, you can send me a DM and we can have a chat. And with that, I will see y'all in the next one.